you just have to focus on yourself and then mm. you just move ahead no matter what. Because mm. you cannot please everyone. That's the main idea. You cannot please everyone. So you just yeah. focus on yourself. All women have to deal with it, especially when it comes to like how you look like. Like you say earlier on, we don't talk about number. We don't talk about 118 kg or maybe she goes to the last 10 years to realize that number is nothing. That number is have no meaning beside of who are you as a person and healthy. So how do you deal with the body shame and how you break through that? And what message you want to give to the younger outside there to understand correctly about the word body shame? So... Um, I'm glad they were on this topic because I remember at the start it was actually body shaming that was also one of the contributing factors I think yes. um, when I was young my parents were already um, I don't think every any parent would do it intentionally to hurt their child but sometimes yes, maybe it's like tough love um, I remember my mom used to criticize me they were, and I hear that a lot from people I work with now too which is our heaviest critics perhaps our family members, which we then internalize in ourselves. We have them. And that's why I criticize myself. Mm. Sometimes still, I'm still breaking away from that. It's taken mm. me a long time. So examples would be the body shaming habits. I mean, not habits, like some things that happen would be, let's say my, my parents would used to tell me, uh, look, look at yourself. You look like that. And then another girl will walk past, right? I will be in the mm. car with my family in the past. They would say, why? My mom would say, why can't you look like that girl? Like, why do you look like that? Like, why, mm. why do you look so... Yeah, and then they would criticize me. And I remember one time when I went for prom. You know, prom, you dress up, right? And I was so big, I was 118 kilos. Uh, I had to buy clothes. And it was the first time I dressed up. In the past, I only wore like three shirts a year mm. because I couldn't find clothes my size. And people were used to call me boy because my hair was really short. And I just yeah. looked like a boy. Like, and I was just big, right? I'm so tall. And so then um, and my parents would laugh at me. Like, they just laughed at me when I wore my prom clothes, which I selected and I thought it looked really good. So I think I was really hurt by that. And I think for some time, you will hold that kind of anger. Like, mm. you know, like what you said, you're worried that um, people will say, why are you such a tiger mom? Why you why you are so harsh to your like daughter? I think at that time, there were some parts where I was thinking of that of my parents, where I was like, yes. why, why, they, why they never stopped me from uh, eating? Then I became so big. Then now everybody like, is mocking me and laughing at me. Then they body shame me at the same time. And then I felt yes. like I was blaming them. But then I've come to realize that your parents don't know best because that was how they were taught. Maybe to them, yes. that was a way of showing love. My parents mm. told me, I think for myself, maybe to them, they were saying, you know, we need to tell you the truth because this is what society would say of you. We are preparing you for the future. That's what they told yes. me. So I remember it was actually true when I went outside. Um, there was one time there was a man who told me when I was 16, he said, you need to lose some weight now. I think you are, you're too big, you need to lose some weight. When I was 16, he came to me and he told me that. So at that point, obviously, I was like, whoa, like, whoa, okay, like that was, that was uncalled for. And I, you just feel really horrible about yourself. So I would say, remember you asked about the tipping point. There were all the small little things and along with the fact that I wouldn't be very healthy and that I think yes. it sparked me on this journey. But the body shaming thing is even real even after you start on your fitness journey. It will yes. always be happening. And the greatest critic you have will always be yourself. Because mm. I have clients who are like doing so well I see them improving weeks upon weeks. And I look at the pictures because we do tracking, right? And I tell them, like, even if the scale doesn't move, you look amazing. And I will tell them, look at how much strength you gain. And I have the pictures to show it. I do the comparisons and I track everything. And they will say, no, I look horrible. I still have this, I, like my arms, like my hips. So they become their greatest critics. And I recognize that because I was like that. You will always end up internalizing what your family, because they are the greatest influence they have on you, and yeah. then what society around you says. So let's say, again, the cultural thing. If let's say I'm from Singapore and there's a certain size that people are supposed to look like mm. to be ideal, right? Or yes. like when I used to travel especially when I was like, overseas. Especially yeah. you Chinese Singaporean girl, you have to look cute <laughs> and skinny and white. <laughs> but it's not true. Even now, actually my mom is saying, she will come to me and say, why are you so muscular? She's like, you're so brown now. Oh my god, you're so tan. Like, are you are you sure? Like, what if nobody will come and like? Oh, I think all the guys are scared of you. And I said, okay, but that's not the point. I don't lift weights to look good for people. I lift weights because I want to be strong. I want mm. to be healthy, and it's my own personal challenge and my own personal project. I am my own personal project, and I work yes. on it every day. Even if I'm not 
like I'm tired, I work on it every day because remember we said we set that goal. And then no matter what people say about me as my personal project, I'll say, okay, you know what? I am the captain of my own ship. People can give me advice. They can say, you know, you, you, I don't think you should grow your arms so much. Are you sure girls can look so strong? And, and, but you have different camps, uh, obviously. Sometimes some yes. people will say very nice things. A lot of people are actually very encouraging. Then there are other people who are very more conventional. They'll say, no, I think you should look a bit weaker. Maybe you should pretend to be less strong so that you don't scare people. But I don't think we are born in the world to please other people, right? Yeah. So you should, right. exactly. And I think you have that mentality too, which is great. And I love it because the energy is that I get from you is that exactly I think we need to learn that body shaming is real because there will always be you cannot you cannot fit expectations of people's beauty because it's everyone has a different way of seeing beauty Mm. like no matter where you cannot please them even within a society you have variances in terms of how people view beauty like even when I was traveling you have like extreme comments of like wow like maybe something seen here is too much but over there is like the norm like when I was traveling in Europe, everyone was training and everyone was so strong. The girls yes. were muscular. Yes. It's normal. But just that here, maybe I took on something that is not common yet. But now it's yeah. more common. Yes, right? now it's so, getting picked up. Yes. Mm. So just to ignore all those comments and realize that every time you criticize, it's not because it's most likely, right, the person who's criticizing you themselves face a lot of criticism. And that's why mm. they have acknowledged that. So what I like to tell myself is when I hear of people body shaming, you must remember that I actually feel sympathy like more than anything because I know that if you are doing, you're saying this to me, perhaps someone has said this to you before or someone has like done this and you realize that to you, this is the norm. And that's why you say it and do it to other people. So I just try not to tune it out because whatever you say, some people will just not learn. Yeah, It's just them. So you just have to focus on yourself. And then mm. you just move ahead no matter what. Because mm. you cannot please everyone. That's the main idea. You cannot please everyone. So you just yeah. focus on yourself and what you do, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's very nice message from you because for me, body shame topic is always the huge topic that almost uh, like you go through the different struggling. Like for me, for example, I give you an example. I will go to body shame in different topic because I'm a Vietnamese girl and then I'm short and I'm tiny, right? So... When it come to body shape, like, oh, you small little girl, what can you do, right? It like, when you go out, and you know, in Singapore, you meet people two meter tall is a normal for us. <laughs> you meet tall guy from European working here, like, it's just a mixed culture. So mm. people will judge you anyway. Like, they like, and when I become small and cute, and when I, after I give birth, they will look at me as like, yeah, all mommy like that. After give birth, you will look like shit. And then after mm. I change myself, I exercise, I become fit again. Then people will body shame me a different way. Oh, you don't yes. look professional. You look like body glass. You know, my body is body glass. And they were like, oh, yeah. body glass, normally it look like a sexual girl. Uh, oh you don't God. look like a smart yes. woman. You don't look like a business woman. You look more like a sexual uh, objective for men. So the body shame topic is never, ever end, mm. right? Like, I'm not choose my body this way. I'm born this way. And even... Like you say, you don't fit, they also body shame you. You get fit also, they body shame you. <laughs> and you will never make anybody happy how you look like. Like for me, I go out, if a man, if I just shut my mouth and I without talking, they will look at me like a sex objective. It's just because you look sexy. You know, like look mm. how you dress, how you wear the clothes. And it's become, we don't have even a choice of how we dress to be feminine, like you say, how we want to dress to be confident and love ourselves. So, yes, I agree. We have to love ourselves and then we will just care enough to ourselves that do I want to wear this way? Do I want to even mm. exercise, become a muscle or your body? If that's what you want to wear for yourself, you know, as a fitness journey, I, I believe like how I want to look like is for me, not for any guy and not any girl, not, not anybody comparison. And and you should not even compare yourself with anyone because let's be real. If you book 100 people in front of us, none of us, the number is the same. The tall, the mm. high, even the eyes, the big, like everything. Like you will have something that people are not happy. So over the time, I learned myself one thing that if I look at my friend, okay, I don't want to talk about did they fat or thin? Because that word is not mm. correct. Okay? Yes. I would talk about healthy. Yes. I would talk like, if my friend too skinny, I would tell them, mm. 
do you know that it's too skinny is never about your butt and your boob you know it's not about that mm. but i want to ask do you feel healthy inside how mm. are your breathing a day how is your walking per clock like how your sleep and also same with my friend who are big size i would tell them look i don't i don't body shame you about your body mm. let's talk about your health how do you feel mm. if you tell me with this size and you happy and you enjoy eating and with you it's like don't talk about my body because some people they be offensive by that as well mm. okay but yeah. as a friend i will front to my friend and say like it's never about your size even you big you small I, you see my friend but let's yeah. be real are you healthy to be my friend are you healthy because if you don't love yourself enough how do you say you will love me as a friend you know like mm. so with me that's a way of sharing that because if we keep talking about body so much people will like oh your body shame other as well but actually no with us when we went through that we will focus more about we love our friend and we want our friend to be healthy am i right to say that you know like yeah. like we really focus on you know with this side you healthy are you healthy are you happy and like you say like mm-hmm. when you're growing up certain time you feel like why you don't stop me from eating so much sweet yeah. but the true your parent also not educate themselves yeah. to know like oh eat so much sweet is a bad and i don't mm-hmm. think even around us right now have much people they, they know eat sweet thing is bad but they don't know how bad was it they were like oh yeah. it's just a little bit today it's just a little bit today but a little bit every day is to become a real issue to become a big size or like become skinny or become a body shame like you say thank you for continue support my missy podcast and don't forget to like it